Hello! Today we are looking at the cave extension for um, the sewers. Um, here's the video so you get what I'm talking about. Yes, good, right? So, I'm going to talk about how I painted it. Also, a lot of people gave me a lot of really good advice, and I tried using it in my videos. And I realized that I might need a lot more in equipment to record my painting. Um, there's a lot of other things that I can just not do because I don't have, you know, a good mic or I have only one recording device, which is this thing right here. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things I would have to buy to get better. And um, thanks to everybody who sent me the, uh, the advice and yeah, thanks for supporting me in my mini painting. Alright, as always, we are starting by looking at the 3D models. I have some stalactites and stalagmites, some pillars holding up our cave. Although, in the, um, in the pictures, you don't see a cave top because I have no idea how to make that. Um, but yeah, there's pillars that support the cave, and if it wasn't um, seen in the video, um, that cave is connected to the um, the sewer system. So the whole campaign idea is the players go into the sewers and, um, on an investigation um, scenario, and then they sort of go into the um, cave that has been dug out from a small part of the sewer so there you go that was the connection between the sewers and the cave um, but yeah the the cave first I start out with you know just a stone color um, I use gray color here as I used in a lot of previous um, paintings. The 3D models for the stalactites and the pillars were the best quality, so I was really able to show my detailing in this a lot more. So I looked into stalactites and stalagmites and how they form and sort of the cave um, cave aesthetics and there was a lot of um, moisture in a cave and uh, wherever there are stalactites and stalagmites there's water the presence of water creates the presence of natural elements like moss and green growth and therefore our models are basically stone and natural growth stone is not just a basic gray color it has a white-ish um, texture to it um, I was actually suggested by my uh, by one of the one of my um, mini painting advice 
advisors um, they told me to use a different kind of light so I'm using a light here um, because this is basically me painting um, in the evening so there wasn't a lot of light coming in um, but yeah this is me painting in a different light I'm hoping that the models show up better in this light as well um, but yeah that's um, the part where I you know painted the uh, stalactites pillars and I had a fun time doing this because I I have now completed uh, one whole part of my campaign here you can actually see the light is more prominent um, it is completely dark outside now and I am painting with this large light on um, the only problem I was having with the lighting is that uh, it was facing me so I was really able to see the models really well so here as you can see I was painting the crates brown or at least that's what I thought but as you can see they're kind of brownish greenish black which is really not what I was going for and so I might have to check out how to do lighting when uh, painting minis or if you have suggestions you could put that in the comments down below that would help me a lot in case of the white um, dry brushing that was going to go on the pillars of the cave I think the light was great because white always reflects white light so I would know when I put a little bit too much or a little bit too less of white on the stone texturing so this time the light was really good to use um, and so yeah that's uh, that's sort of the advantages and disadvantages of having a light facing you rather than I guess putting a light behind you the only problem with putting a light behind me in this case would be the camera capturing the painting would not get anything it would just get dark uh, shadowy objects so I'm going to have to work on my lighting but please let me know if you have any good suggestions so yeah I just continued painting dry painting um, the white uh, texturing on the pillars as always I left the gray paint a little wet because what happens is the dry white paint then um, gets mixed into the gray and um, it creates this really cool texture of the white blending in with the gray and it almost looks like some kind of marble of course that's not what we're going for but it looks cool so I I would leave that to you as a choice whether you want your minis to look cool or realistic both are awesome it's just I love my minis to look cool um, but yeah that's what the white paint gave me actually the one of my um, friends on Instagram told me to do this they asked me to put a darker color um, as a base and a lighter white color most of the times uh, on top so um, it helps with a uh, kind of a texturing and I really like that advice and I used it and it is really working out for me I mean look at those those uh, stalactites or stalagmites um, I don't know which one those are those could be anything actually I could put them upside down or downside up and call them stalactites or stalagmites but I don't know which one's up and which one's down 
but yeah, those look cool. Um, so moving on, um, we go to putting natural stuff, moss, on my stalactites and pillars for the cave. It is now a new day, it is now a new day, and I have natural lighting, which I love the most because it lights up the entire room. Um, yeah, here we go, natural um, stuff growing on the stalactites and stalagmites. Um, check out my cool Batman shirt, I love that shirt, I wear it everywhere, um, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think the green paint really brings out the realisticness of the um, the formations. Um, yeah, I put that down on almost all the cave uh, pieces. There's some stones thrown in there too, just because you know there has to be stones. In this case, um, I also have these broken off stalactite stalagmite formations um, the story behind that in the campaign is bad people are storing kidnapped individuals in this cave and bad individuals are the ones that try to steal these formations in the caves come on people stop stealing them they look so cool and stealing them only stop them from forming so stop stealing cave formations they're very cool um, another thing about the natural formations is I don't like to keep it just one color and I've probably said this many times I put down a dark green after putting down a light green color this time I did not put too much dark green because because when I put down the dark and light rock um, texturing, that just created a background color. So when I put the green on top, the darker, darker texture of the rock created dark greens and lighter created light greens. So thank you so much to my Instagram um, friend that told me to do that that helps me a lot um, but as always I am still kind of a paranoid person so I mixed in dark green and started painting dark green onto the formations and it worked a little bit it you know sort of wasted my time I guess but um, I had to quench my thirst for um, perfecting the things <laughs> um, but yeah I think with that um, the key formation part of this map comes to an end next up is going to be the big crates the crates that have our mouse folk trapped in them and our party members have to investigate and locate these boxes and free these individuals hopefully all right so behind the scenes i might have repainted those really black greenish brown boxes brown i've painted them brown um but i learned something from my mistake if I paint them dark, like my Instagram friend told me to, and put a lighter brown color on top, they look so good. They also give a vibe of being in a uh, cave for a while. So, I don't know why, but I keep getting lucky and all my mistakes keep changing into awesome uh, tricks and tips for any new people that are following me to get better at mini painting oh by the way if you are new watching this video for mini painting as you can see I am not good 
And if you're not good, just like me, come on, what are you waiting for? Let's paint together. Um, just put this video on in the background and, you know, paint with me. Um, it doesn't matter how bad you are. I started really bad and I'm still very, very bad at this. You can see how bad I am with painting that that edge of metal. Um, I have really trashy paints and brushes. That's what I started out with because I did not want to start out with expensive paints. And you should do that too. At least that's my advice. Don't waste your money on expensive paints or expensive brushes. You know, just, just um, be bad. Slowly get better. And let's paint together. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I started, um, putting down the metal stuff, and, um, I think the boxes, I have got them, you know, to the point. I think I understand how to paint boxes now. As you can see, some of the boxes also have some sort of, um, these, uh, cloth bags, um, and... I did not know what to paint those because they are this brownish, uh, yellowish color, and so that's what I did. I just I just tried to mix yellow, white, and brown colors together to try and get a bag color. <laughs> um, it's one of those bags that you can fill fill it up with potatoes. Um, but yeah. There you go. That's um, that's how I do my crates, um, barrels, and um, bags of potatoes. I'm hoping they're bags of potatoes and not um, anything bad. Um, with that, we come to an end on this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like and subscribe to uh, look at more of my videos comment down below with all of your advices and questions i'll hopefully answer them and yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll play the sort of end trailer one more time thank you